Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. And happy Monday, the Monday after the Thanksgiving in the U.S. I am so, so full from Thanksgiving. <laughs> Still? Like, I'm a blueberry. Yeah. <laughs> I love holiday food. Like, I love just, like, really dense foods. I don't know. <laughs> Is that weird to say? I can't no. be the only one. No, it's interesting because... I mean, obviously, I'm Indian, for those who didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, what? They're like, what? You're Indian? (laughs) So we do like a fusion. So it's not like we have like the traditional, you know, turkey stuffing thing. Like, there was no turkey inside. (laughs) It's all like Indian food. (laughs) Oh, that's kind of cool. We kind of do a fusion too. Like, there's a turkey still. And we have mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. But we also have like spring rolls, like Vietnamese spring roll, Um, sushi, kimchi. It's a very Asian Thanksgiving every year. Ours is too. It's very Indian. You have like a bunch of biryanis and samosas everywhere. <laughs> but totally. Yeah. Well, we're recording remotely again because I'm still in Texas. But, you know, I'll be making a comeback to the cold, cold tundra of Chicago soon. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't. Don't come <laughs> back here. Stay there forever. Stay I need there. to get out. It is so cold outside. Every year, I do not get used to the Chicago winter. Yeah. Like, I I was born here in Chicago, for those of you who don't know. I was born in Ravenswood, which is a neighborhood here in Chicago. And I've pretty much been here all my life, minus, you know, the time I used to live in San Francisco, Atlanta, and Boston in um, in my 20s. But I never get used to the cold. Yeah. Like, it actually, it actually makes me sick. <laughs> yeah, well, can I just tell you, this is so weird, but so I'm in Dallas right now, and it's actually really cold. I was like, it's Texas. What's really cold? What's really cold? Bro, it's like 50s. Please, it's 20s <laughs> over here. Well, okay, yeah, but I expected it to be like 80s. But we did go to Austin, though, for actual Thanksgiving, and it's like warmer there. But I'm like, still, I'm like, it's cold. Like, why is it cold in Texas? Like, we're so close to the equator, no? I know you've been gone for a few weeks now, but 50s is like, like summertime. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like if it reached 50 here, it would be like people would be wearing shorts. (laughs) <laughs> yeah not in texas though people are wearing big big sweaters and jackets here oh, the man. texans are a different breed <laughs> not that there really is fashion here in chicago but i love that you can wear anything you want during the winter time like it doesn't matter the brand of parka you have it doesn't matter what brand of gloves hat scarves you have because everyone is just so bundled up like no one cares it also doesn't matter what you're wearing underneath like your entire winter gear I could be wearing my pajamas, but nobody knows because I'm all bundled up. Yes, exactly. You just throw on some knee-high boots. No one can see the pajamas underneath. No, exactly. <laughs> just throw on a jacket. Yeah. But also, like, let's be for real. I'm not leaving my apartment when it's cold. No. no. <laughs> I I refuse. This is the time of year where it comes in handy that I'm a homebody because I don't feel lonely. Even when I don't leave my house for nine days. (laughs) Yeah, it's a good excuse. (laughs) But how was your Thanksgiving? It was really good. I want to tell you something funny, though. And I feel like only Asians will be able to relate to this. Okay. Um, Okay. So I don't, do you know this? But East Asian earwax is different than European earwax. Why would I know this? (laughs) What? (laughs) So... So yeah, are that's you aware? Where, uh, no, I'm not aware of the earwax situation. <laughs> so my earwax is dry and white as yours. No, what? I don't think I've looked at my earwax in a really long time. You've never looked at your earwax? No, that's weird. Okay, maybe it's an East Asian thing, but I'm very, very aware of what my earwax looks like. I look at it probably once a week. That's odd. Like from removing it, not like just. (laughs) You're like, "Hmm, let me take a picture. (laughs) Most Koreans earwax is just white and dry, which is very different than I think Caucasian people's earwax, which is like yellowish and wet. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, hmm, what does Indian earwax look like? Take a look. Take your finger and kind of scoop some out. (laughs) and then report back to us (laughs) i'd rather not (laughs) but i think i might just for you (laughs) send me a picture after this episode i'm curious now 
my interest has peaked. <laughs> you know, I, I worry about you sometimes. <laughs> same i worry you're, about myself too you're a very interesting character <laughs> like why is earwax appealing to you i would like to know i think it's the same reason why watching blackheads be removed from someone's face is appealing to me like why that brings me comfort and why i seek out that content online i think that's why i have some sort of interest in earwax it's all related in my head, you know, <laughs> like yeah. whatever's going on with me. It's all it's all related. <laughs> yeah. Those are things I typically try to avoid 100 percent. So you yeah. and I are cut from different cloths, girl. <laughs> we're very different people. <laughs> we're, we're, we're both Asian, but we're very different people. <laughs> if you look at my discover page and my for you page looks very different from deep D's. Let me tell you. Oh, absolutely. let me tell you. <laughs> the motivational quotes do not add up to <laughs> blackheads and earwax. <laughs> Hers are all like motivational quotes, romanticizing your life, like the universe stuff. And mine's all blackhead removals and pimples being popped. Yeah. <laughs> mine's all 11, 11, 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3. What? Why you're seeing signs? <laughs> and mine's one large white head. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, hmm, is she going to pop that? <laughs> Oh my god, that's so uh, Natalie coded. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I hate that you said that. It's so <laughs> true. Like who? Who? I can't. Okay, oh, so tell gosh. me this funny story. I don't even know the story anymore. It left my mind. <laughs> I don't even know what I was gonna say. Oh, I do. I do. Okay. Okay. One of my cousins brought this tool slash device. It's an ear picker with a camera in it. The camera is connected to your phone via Bluetooth. And so you're able to like see inside your ear. Oh my gosh, this is like Christmas morning for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like an earwax picker. And so one of my cousins has a husband who is white and we use this ear picker on him. What we saw on that camera, we screamed because the wax looked so different. It was like the yellowish, like wettish wax earwax mm -hmm. and it looks so different from ours we were obsessed we we're like going in his ear we we're like wow <laughs> like i just have never seen anything like it the fact that that's what intrigues you is is beyond <laughs> i know and i was all like i had no idea but i felt really bad because i have another cousin who is dating a white guy and mm -hmm. you could tell he didn't want to be next. So, like he didn't want us to look at his earwax. So he pretended he got a phone call from his mom at the exact moment he was next. And we didn't see him for the rest of Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> he like ran away. Uh, he is me and I am him because <laughs> that would be me. I would be like hiding in the basement. I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to go out to the store. <laughs> all Meanwhile, all stores are closed. I'm like, I'll yeah. be right back. <laughs> yeah, no, he totally disappeared. My other cousin's husband was so great about it right because we were all like freaking out and screaming and like all of our parents are like looking over like what is happening and we're like <laughs> taking videos of this like all this stuff which of course i will post <sighs> but then <laughs> my other cousin's boyfriend literally ran away and and i felt really bad but also i was like at least he's exposed to this family like oh to God. this culture yeah like, he should know this is what koreans do uh, look at earwax <laughs> But, okay, there's actually a really good reason why um, almost all Koreans have this, like, white and flaky earwax that doesn't smell. So typically earwax smells, but ours don't. Like, mine does not smell. Um, it's because we have the ABCC11 gene. Okay. And this is a real thing. It's called the no body odor gene, which nearly all Koreans and most East Asians have. So I don't have body odor. I have never worn deodorant in my life. What? You're probably yeah. saving so much money. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, because this gene prevents our armpits from smelling. Like, I don't know exactly what our body does, but we just don't produce body odor in our armpits. Oh, that's so interesting. What, do you just yeah. not have sweat glands in your ear? Or do you... <laughs> <wait>. <laughs> You have me like, all thrown <laughs> off because now I'm thinking about ears. I meant in your armpits. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sure you don't have any sweat glands in your ears also, but um, do you not have any in your armpits? <laughs> no, if I go to a workout class, I, I still like fully sweat. And I'm pretty sure I sweat in my armpits. I just haven't really paid attention. But I just don't smell. 
Like I don't, I, I don't have any smell coming out of my armpit. (laughs) Question for you. Have you had this validated from your partners or your friends? (laughs) Because what if, you know how like your nose acclimates to the smell? (laughs) So I'm like, have you had this tested? (laughs) Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Here I am saying like, I don't have body odor. And deep is probably like, yeah, you do. In your mind, you're probably like, hmm. Well, what about the last time I saw you? <laughs> I'm thinking back. I'm like, hmm, I've never smelled anything, but I'm questioning it. <laughs> no, I, I just don't smell because I brought up this fact to like other partners in the past. And yeah, I just don't smell. And they'll say like, oh, you yeah, you don't smell like after a workout. I do kind of smell like salty, like from my sweat. Like there's <laughs> yeah. still that smell, but I don't have BO. Like oh, I've never so had BO in my life. Actually, who knows? But I don't think I've ever had BO in my life. And it's because of this gene. Wow. That's actually kind of crazy. I know. Crazy, right? Don't you wish you were Korean now? I do. I wish. (laughs) Yeah, because as Indians, we smell a little. (laughs) That's why I have this pressure to marry another Korean guy because I want this gene to live on. (laughs) <laughs> imagine what your um cousins white boyfriends or husbands are probably going through they're like damn i better bring extra deodorant <laughs> to all family events <laughs> actually so every summer my mom's side of the family like including our aunts uncles all my cousins we spend a few days together at a lake house during the summer mm-hmm. and one of the white partners i won't say who <laughs> <laughs> was like, hey, does anyone have like deodorant? I've got a pack mine. And out of the 16 people there were like, no, like, <laughs> no one wears deodorant. He's like, not one single person. <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay. Like, all right. And did he stink a little bit that weekend? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, someone tell him about DoorDash. <laughs> no, for real. For real. So yeah. anyways, fun fact. Yeah. You know, it's interesting having, you know, all the family together for Thanksgiving because normally I feel like I just celebrate Thanksgiving with like my immediate family. Like I never spend it with our extended family. But this year we decided to do like a whole like get together and like a family reunion thing. And it's just so interesting because I feel like during the holidays, I always get a little bit depressed because I think I've talked about this before, but I've had a boyfriend for like, you know, seven years in my twenties or whatever. But every time holidays rolled around, I never brought him home with me. And I don't know if you relate to this, but Unless I'm sure I'm marrying somebody, I'm not going to bring them home just because I need to figure out like what is up with our relationship. Is it does it have longevity? And if it doesn't, like I'm not trying to bring home multiple men, you know, and I think I've talked about this before, but Shake is the only person I've ever brought home. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the show. (laughs) The show is like, you better you better have him meet your family. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And it was mandated. (laughs) And you're like, no. Yeah, exactly. They say with my parents, they're like, yeah, like Shane's going to have to meet your parents. And I was like, "Mm -mm." yeah, I was like, can we can we just pretend like, I don't know, they're like really far away. (laughs) They're like, no, we already contacted them behind your back. And I was like, okay. Our dogs are not just pets. They are family. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for my sweet Pixel. He's 16 now, which means I need to make sure he's getting the best nutrients and is healthy, which is why I love Sundays for dogs. And he loves it just as much. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, fresher breath, and more energy after switching to Sundays. Also, Sundays is super easy to store and serve because it requires no refrigeration. I don't have a dog, but I know this because I've seen Deep Tea serve Sundays to Pixel a lot of times. So when you start a subscription with Sundays, you'll automatically get 20% off and free shipping on every reorder. You can cancel or pause your subscription anytime with their 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash out of the pods or use code out of the pods at checkout. Have you ever brought a man home for the holidays? I actually didn't like bringing my boyfriends home for the holidays. I also felt like maybe similar to you where it wasn't always serious enough during the holidays where I felt like I should be taking him away from his parents during the holidays and vice versa because I love spending the holidays with 
all of my family members. Like that's where I see my cousins from out of town. So I just didn't feel like ever compromising on the holidays. So I was like, you do your own thing with your family and I'll do mine. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. That's exactly kind of similar how I felt too. And also I just felt like super anxious about the whole situation, but I would always go and spend time with his family over the holidays. So I was like, oh, this is fine. Like I can, I used to just lie to my parents and be like, oh, I'm not coming home. And I would come home and go and stay at his parents with him. (laughs) I know. I'm like, the double life I lived is absolutely insane. But anyways, this is the first time I feel like I'm spending time with like my entire family because I have a lot of family that lives in India and all over the country, like New York, New Jersey, California, Texas. And then, of course, I'm in Chicago area. And so it it's just hard to get the whole family together. And I am so excited that we all got to spend time, all of us like enjoying life and like kind of seeing all the generations together. And it's crazy because like all the cousins have kids now. So it's just so weird to see everyone interacting and being parents. And, you know, and then there's me and the single one over here. Did you get those questions? Because I did. Oh, like, 100%. Oh, like, when are you going to get married? And I was like, when are you going to get divorced? How about that? <laughs> Let me ask you that. When yeah. are you going to get divorced? Yeah. How come that people never ask me, are you happy? They're always like, what are you up to? No. How, are you happy? Please. <laughs> no. And I had to talk about like egg freezing. I'm like, so I did this thing. And it's so funny how the older generation does not understand egg freezing. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, what do you mean? Like, is it a test tube, baby? <laughs> like, I'm confused. Like, yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm exactly. like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but the part about it is it's not a baby yet. <laughs> and it's frozen somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why the holidays can be so hard because, like, you get all those questions. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still single. And Natalie, get this. Literally, I am the only one on my dad's side of the family who is single. Everyone else is married or in a relationship. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I feel like that's the best thing. Like, you're living your best life. No stress. You don't have the stress of a man, kid, (laughs) owning a home. You could, if you wanted to, you could just get up and move to, I don't know, Australia. Yeah, exactly. What a life. <laughs> if anything, I'm like, I'm living the best life I've ever had. Yeah. You know what? For the first time also, I'm like not even upset about it. I'm like, yeah, this is like what I'm up to. And, yeah. you know, it's not like a hard thing to talk about because I'm like, I feel like I've had so many life experiences that I'm not like, you know, too pressed about it. But it is interesting to see because I'm like, oh, there's a child over here. There's a child over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I totally get it. Um, I experienced that too. I mean, my grandmother, every time I see her, she tells me how she's praying that I find my husband and I get married this year. And I'm like, <laughs> the year's already over, okay? <laughs> I was like, there's one month left. I was like, the only way that's going to happen is if I go back on Love is Blind <laughs> and get married within six weeks. Uh, would you ever um, go back on Love is Blind? <laughs> please. Uh, yeah, like a right. All-Stars episode. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was an All-Stars? <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone has to go in like anonymous names. <laughs> you know, I know. Just to and you have fair. to change your voice. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm Janet. <laughs> This is Ashley. <laughs> They're like, what season are you from? Uh, season five. <laughs> I don't know. And then uh, they'll probably be like, I didn't watch that season. I'd be like, yeah, uh, many people did not. No, you're not allowed to give away what season you're from. That'll give away too much. Yeah. Info. Yeah. Now I feel like it doesn't bother me, though. The older I get when people are like, why aren't you married yet? Like, oh, you're still single. Are you dating? And you just got to be like, how are you doing without sleeping a lot? Because you have a kid now. (laughs) (laughs) You know, what's interesting, though, I did have like a very honest conversation with one of my cousins who basically got an arranged marriage. She's like older than me, like my dad's oldest brother's daughter. So there's like a bit of an age difference. And it was so nice to have an honest conversation with her. And she's like, no, I'm really proud of you for just kind of sticking with your journey and not like prioritizing just having a partner because she's like, you know, I've never lived alone before. I had kids by the time that I was like, you know, 32, 33. And it feels like I didn't get to 
live and do certain things in life before having kids and like my life changing. And so it was like really nice to get that, I don't know, boost of confidence to be like, okay, you know, you can't judge yourself on where you are in your journey. I think it's like very important to just embrace it all. And I think about that often. I'm like, when you're single, like who knows when you're going to meet your partner, but like you'll never get this time to yourself again. So you should just enjoy every minute of it. And like Natalie says, you know, you got to romanticize your life. (laughs) I've never said that. Deep just all the time. (laughs) (laughs) What I meant was you say it about me. (laughs) And I was like, those words have never come out of my mouth. (laughs) Um, I will say like, you know, even if I don't find a partner, let's say I'm single forever, like I think that's okay too. Like I am going to love every day of my life and live my life to the fullest. But also I think about how, let's say we did prioritizing finding partners and we settled for like the next guy we see. I say this to my grandma every time she's like, I'm praying for you to get married. But I'm like, grandma, like I was engaged once. And think about like if I got married just to be married, I don't think I would have been happy. And I think when my grandmother asks me that, she forgets about that. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not about being married. It's more about, like, I guess, being in a relationship with someone you care about and loves you and treats you well. If I'm not going to be in that sort of marriage, like, I don't want to be married. Yeah. Like, if I'm not meeting men that are going to treat me well and make me feel good and are going to be reliable and supportive partners, like, why would I get married? Yeah, I think that's the thing with the older generation is that they just grew up like that, where they prioritize marriage, especially for women, because it was like literally dug so deep into their mindset that, hey, like after you reach a certain age, this is what you have to do. But society is changing. But the mindset of the old generation is still the same because like, obviously, for like 50 plus years, they've been with that same old mindset and it's hard to like grasp the new reality of what life is you know so totally I totally get it but it's it is hard to like deliver the news and be like okay listen there's more to life than just having a partner and having kids you know yeah Yeah. I don't do it but my dad will step in and be like my daughter doesn't need a man. She's doing fine herself. She doesn't need anyone. I know my dad's very much like my daughters don't need partners, like, unless, like, their potential partner is going to be, like, this amazing dude. But he's like, no, they're fine oh as gosh. is. Like, they don't need someone. They, like, make their own money and do their own things, and they're happy without partners. And I was like, thanks, Dad. Oh, and then my grandma's like, you don't understand. <laughs> like, I, I need great-grandchildren. <laughs> wait that's the sweetest thing ever your dad is such a sweet baby angel no I'm telling you my dad I don't know how he became the way he is because on my dad's side of the family it's pretty like patriarchal Mm -hmm. so I don't know how my dad became such a dare I say feminist (laughs) (laughs) but he like truly is like my biggest fan and my sister's biggest fan wait I love that This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. My favorite part about the holidays is getting together with family that I don't see very often and just making memories together, watching nostalgic movies, cooking together, playing board games. I think the feeling of being surrounded by people just brings me comfort. Therapy is another great way to bring yourself some comfort that never goes away, even when the season changes. I agree. I find a lot of comfort in therapy. It helps me with positive coping skills and setting some healthy boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find comfort this December with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash out of the pods today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash out of the pods. Can I just tell you something that happened to me the other day? What? <laughs> You're going to laugh. Um, so I've been feeling a little bit under the weather. I think I mentioned in the last episode, but I went into urgent care. So obviously you're seeing a new doctor and this doctor was so interesting. He walks in and he asks me like, oh, like, how old are you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm 33. And then he goes into this spiel about how like, as Asian women, 
after the age of 30, you become like old news and it's really hard to find a partner and how like it's really important that you do find a partner, but it gets harder and harder after like the years go by after you're 30 plus. I was just looking at him like, am I in the twilight zone right now? Like, why is he talking to me about finding a partner? And I'm over here like, hey, like I'm not feeling well. Can you just like find out what's wrong with me and prescribe me some medicine so I can go? But he's just like talking to me on and on about this. And I'm like, Sir, like, I, I'm good. Like, I don't need to be talking to you about my romantic life and finding a partner and how hard it is right now. Like, can you believe that? <laughs> I love how he says, as Asian women, you should be like, oh, because you're an Asian woman, sir? Like, really? <laughs> yeah. He was an Asian man, but I was like, okay, I get it. Like, I understand where you're coming from, but like, why are you talking to me about this? Like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Wait, very how, interesting. why did he bring that up? Like, did he know you were single or did he just walk in? He's like, Mom, here's well, an Asian woman. I'm going to, uh, this is the spiel I've got to give. <laughs> well, you know how, um, well, I just did the egg retrieval like a week and a half, two weeks prior to me going into the urgent care. So I was like, okay, it's important for me to tell him like that I did that just in case it's related somehow to me being sick. And that's when he started talking to me about it. And he was like getting very personal with me. He goes, oh, okay, you did your egg retrieval. Like, you know, it's very important for you to be finding a partner before it's too late. I was like, uh, sir, like time and place. I'm I know sick. I <laughs> I'd be like, uh, no, I, I've i given up on that. I just realized um, the male population just really isn't doing it for me this year. So yeah, you're like, have you seen the dating pool in Chicago, sir? <laughs> yeah, I feel like really the choices are very slim. Oh, man. <laughs> that is what a so time. crazy. That is so crazy. I don't even know what I would have said. Yeah, I feel like I'm the type of person who like talks back a lot. Like if yeah. I feel like offended, mm -hmm. I can't help but say something not yeah. in a mean way but I'll always do a little quip like I'll yeah. just say something but I don't know what I would say to that I did say back to him like no I'm a very independent girl like I want to travel I want to focus on my career like I think having a partner right now would actually be a big headache like I said <laughs> that <laughs> but he kept going and I was just like you know when you just like play along you're like I'm just gonna play along just to get through this you just nod <laughs> Yeah, you're like, mm -hmm, you're totally it's right. It's just not worth the energy to fight back. Yeah, you're like, well, exactly. He's also he's also my doctor right now. And needs a prescribing <laughs> medicine, so I'm just gonna go along with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. After the appointment, too, I sat in my car for a while and I was like, "What just happened to me? Like, was I in the twilight zone for real? Like, what in the hell just happened?" <laughs> I remember you texted me, being like, "You won't believe what happened," but then I never heard the story. I was like, "Save it for the podcast." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell our pod besties. <laughs> yeah, tell our pod besties. <laughs> well, anyways, that was my, uh, that was how that went. <laughs> wow, geez, people don't have any filters. They're going to get some backlash like Vanessa Lachey when she started bringing up the babies in Love and Blonde <laughs> oh, yeah. Season 4 reunion. Yeah, honestly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> This is kind of off topic, but during Thanksgiving break, I went to go see the movie Wicked with my cousins, and it stars Ariana Grande, and she plays Galinda in the movie. And I came out of that movie really, really liking Ariana Grande, which was really surprising because just last year, she was one of the most hated celebrities because mm -hmm. allegedly she was involved in breaking up the marriage of Ethan Slater, who is her co-star in the movie. And it was super messy. Like Ariana went on double dates with Ethan and his wife with her husband at the time. Like it was all super just icky. And she even lost three million followers on Instagram since that all happened. But I feel like this movie changed her professional reputation. She also became the first person to have a number one movie, number one album and number one song in the U.S. all at the same time. So she's like having this comeback after kind of her downfall last year just due to this affair slash cheating scandal. But I thought that was, I don't know, just super interesting that she was able to kind of like bounce back like that. I remember when this all went down and I was so surprised. I didn't know about the whole double date situation, though. That's actually kind of crazy. Yeah. It it is there is something to say about co-stars kind of getting close because they're working so closely together. And I don't know. I, I do understand feelings growing between people, but like to break up marriages or like not think of the repercussions of your personal life is kind of insane to me. 
Yeah. And again, these are just allegations. Like, I don't know if they were ever proven to be true or not, but something happened. Like, there was a little bit of an overlap because there were rumors coming from set during the filming of Wicked that Ariana and Ethan were in a relationship while he was still married to his wife. Um, Also, his wife said something at the time, like when all of this started getting onto the media, she's all like, Ariana is not a girl's girl. So like something happened. Mm, Yeah. that's. Um, But anyways, I just, again, it just comes down to the fact that Ariana had this like homewrecker status just last year, became super unpopular in the media. And then she bounces back because of this movie pretty much. And Mm -hmm. just because also like time passed. And I don't know, it kind of reminded me of like, kind of the love is blind franchise not to bring it back to love is blind but in the fact that like people can recover from their villain persona if they continue putting content out there if they do other shows you know like as time passes like you kind of see that with jessica from season one like she was a villain when the show came out like i don't think people really remember but also if you re-watch season one it's really bad. Like she comes off just like really horrendous. And also as someone who's trying to break up a relationship, Amber and Barnett's relationship. Mm -hmm. And then with after the altar and, you know, some things that came to light um, about her partner on the show, Mark, like it kind of changed her public reputation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And now, all of the media like who follows her is rooting for her because she's married yeah. and has a baby and she seems to be living such a happy beautiful life and that is really her best comeback because she's so unbothered by what happened to her and how the edit was cuz it really does depend on the edit and it kind of sucks yeah. but yeah she's definitely made a redemption for herself and like even coming back for the reunion this past season was like everything to just see her happy but I don't know man that's the thing about media right like the news cycle turns so quickly there's so many things happening and people forget yes which is why you know this I found out that um a lot of celebrities if they ever have like bad news like for example like they're getting divorced or you know something is happening in their life that's gonna pop off on the media they'll release it like on a Friday And by Monday, people forget because the weekend is so busy. And so, like, people just, like, kind of, like, the news turns so fast that it's, like, a, I don't know, a tactic by PR to kind of get the news out over a weekend. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. So my parents asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I realized I'm in this stage of my life where I don't really have anything I want. So when it comes to gifts, I like receiving things that I need, and I like giving gifts that are really useful. For example, I actually gave one of my aunts Nutrafol for her birthday several months ago because she's experiencing hair thinning, and it was such a useful gift to her, especially when she started seeing improvements in her hair. And hair thinning affects nearly half of all women. You can purchase online, no prescription required, and there's automated deliveries and free shipping to keep you or the person you're gifting a Nutrafol subscription to on track. At first, I thought it's a little strange to give Nutrafol as a gift, but I think it's actually a thoughtful way to show you care about a loved one's well-being or confidence. And Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand trusted by over 1 million people. You can see thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding in just three to six months with Nutrafol. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women hair growth supplement for six months. Whether you're gifting to yourself or a loved one, give the gift of great hair growth this holiday season. Right now, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off any order. Enjoy free shipping when you subscribe. Go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code OOTPGIFT. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com promo code OOTPGIFT. That's Nutrafol.com promo code OOTPGIFT. I think another tactic you see with people who are going through some sort of scandal or they have been given the villain status, whether it's on another reality TV show or just in the media, is they just go quiet. And I feel like it's the best tactic. Like you kind of let some time pass, people to focus on something else that's happening, and then you slowly come back. Mm -hmm. I feel like the people who should have done that from the latest season of Love is Blind is probably Tyler, Ashley, and even Hannah. 
I don't think Tyler and Ashley got the villain edit on the show, but obviously they were made villains because of, you know, all the allegations that he cut out his kids, um, lied to Ashley about his kids, all those things. But I think they continue to make it worse by having interviews and getting caught in more lies. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, just be quiet. If, yeah. if you need to find some solace and peace from all this, just sh- go in. Just go, go, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. I don't think that they should be going on podcasts and doing like a media tour by any means because – There's just so much backlash on the situation that's happening right now. And it is very sensitive because it has kids involved that, you know, I think the best thing to do is just spend some time off the Internet so that people can kind of just like forget about you, like you said, so that when you come back, it's not top of mind to them, you know, and not saying that we support them at all. I guess we're just saying, like, that's what I would do if I was involved in something like that. I'd be like. I'm going to slowly go away instead of trying to like talk badly about my baby mama or like defend a partner who's a liar. Like just go away. Mm -hmm. I think Hannah too. I think Hannah made it worse on herself by posting so much when the season was coming out and kind of posting things that defended herself when Mm -hmm. I'm like, Hey, you should just accept the criticism that like you were really mean on the show, take it and, but not create content where you're like, kind of making light of being a mean girl. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Brittany actually from season seven did it the best. Oh, I don't know if you've heard about kind of her little downfall that happened. Uh, Which what downfall? Tell me about it. So um, a few weeks ago, there was allegations that she had a boyfriend when she was filming Love is Blind season seven. Oh, right, right. I did hear about this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So TMZ reported this and got some quotes from friends who knew her and her now ex-boyfriend, but her boyfriend at the time. Hmm. And I think also got some quotes from the boyfriend himself. Anyways, the allegations is that she had a boyfriend during filming. He knew about it, though. And he said that she said she needed the show to gain more followers and fame, um, to, I guess, launch a content creation slash influencer career. Um, And she always knew, like, she would be going back to this boyfriend, but lied to the boyfriend about who she went to Miami with. But she also cheated on said boyfriend with Madsen, who was a singer. And there were paparazzi photos of them in L.A., which obviously got back to the boyfriend. And he's like, what the heck? (laughs) Interesting. I always think back to situations like this, and I'm like, is this boyfriend I don't mean to put it in air quotes but is this boyfriend just trying to get his like five seconds of fame like what is the real purpose because if it were me and tell me if this is accurate for you too I don't know if that happened to me and she cheated on me I kind of would just be like okay this is absolutely wild and just kind of wash my hands of it and move on and be like that's just whatever she's doing is yeah her karma at this point you know but like going to the media or like doing interviews about it it just seems a little like sketchy to me (laughs) because you are a bigger person and a better person (laughs) meanwhile for people with a petty mindset like me (laughs) you best believe i'd be doing the same thing as this boyfriend (laughs) okay because imagine people were like oh my gosh she's dating a famous singer like she's living up to what she said on the show how she dates athletes and rock stars imagine if you were her boyfriend you'd be like what the fuck? Like people are supporting this knowing like I'm back at home Mm -hmm. because she did say during the reunion, she was in a relationship and I guess it was with this guy. He was rightfully pissed and I guess went to the media, but a piece of me is like, I don't blame him. Would I do the same thing? (laughs) I'm not saying I would, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. (laughs) That's why you and I are yin and yang because it's good that we balance each other. I know. (laughs) Didi would be like, The universe allowed this to happen and I'm going to walk away silently. Meanwhile, I was all like, what's TMZ's number? What's their email? (laughs) When can I sit down and interview immediately? (laughs) I would text my friends and be like, you guys anonymously better be like putting shit out there to do more or something. (laughs) See, that I'd be okay with. (laughs) Yeah, I'd be like, make this known. (laughs) But anyways, going back to Britney, she stayed completely silent on this. I think she made one joke TikTok and then just was like, okay, well, back to, you know, my normal content. Back to regularly scheduled programming for her. Yeah. And like people in her comments are like, oh, yeah, hey. (laughs) 
This reminds me of Izzy from season five, though, because remember his ex-girlfriend was claiming that he allegedly cheated? Mm, Yeah. I thought that he was going to get a lot of backlash from it, but he was actually receiving like a lot of love because at the same time he was posting about how he's sober now and like he um, gave up alcohol and, you know, was posting about it and he was getting like a lot of love from it and he didn't get much backlash from the whole like cheating situation. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I think that he should receive a lot of love and support for, you know, publicly announcing that you know, he um, had an issue with alcohol and now he's sober. Like, I totally get that. But yeah, you're right. It's like, you know, there were some receipts about how he cheated on his ex and kind of is like pushed under the rug. But sometimes I'm like, who are we to like write mean comments or like say, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not our place. But also I am a judgy person. So I'm like, (laughs) This is another really great gift idea for your family and friends. Socks, like a really good pair of socks are such a useful gift for this winter. And Heat Holders has the warmest thermal socks. So I wear my Heat Holder socks in my house every single day. I even wear them during our episodes and they feel like little warm blankets on my feet. Honestly, all their products are the warmest and softest. It makes sense considering Heat Holders has over 40,000 five-star reviews. Their blankets are so cozy and they also have hats, gloves, base layers, jackets, etc. I also really like that their base layers come in three levels of warmth, original, light, and ultralight. It's so good to have these in your closet for the cold winter day or if you're traveling to a colder climate. Yes, and I have plans to go to Iceland next year, and I'm definitely going to be taking those base layers with me. So head over to heatholders.com, that's heatholders.com, and use the code out of the pods at checkout to get 15% off your whole order. And don't forget, shipping is free with any purchase over $25. Heat holders, making life warmer. I think the whole point of this is, you know, we shouldn't be so harsh and the public is very harsh but like people are gonna make mistakes it's just that celebrities or you know dealer celebrities or reality tv stars are just people too they're just living their life it's just that you know they're in the spotlight and it's easy to judge them and to leave mean comments like you said or kind of pass judgment when like i get it it's fun to do but at the same time it's like let's give them some grace and that's how i feel about ariana grande too if i'm being honest like she's just a girl like i get it it's it looks really really bad but at the same time like i don't know feelings are so natural and especially if you're working on a project that you're so she... passionate about <laughs> girl i mean but to cheat obviously i don't condone cheating whatsoever But I do think like humans make mistakes and it's just life. I don't know. Pop Essies, you guys know what I'm going to say. I don't think cheating is a mistake. I think cheating consists of 3,000 mistakes (laughs) that someone just continuously, stupidly made. But um, no, I, I think it's really interesting. Again, like the reason why I brought this up is like how people can recover from like scandals the villain persona depending on what they do how they act what they don't do like staying silent Mm -hmm. and some people do it well like ariana grande and some people don't you know what i often think about too is reoccurring reality tv shows like the cast that comes back every season like for example vanderpump rules I think about that often, like one season, they're the hero, like they get the perfect edit. And then the next season, they're the villain. And it's like this, I don't know, back and forth of their character arcs. And that's why I could never be on a reoccurring show. Like doing Love is Blind is one thing, but doing After the Altar, I don't know, that was like really hard for me. I feel like I couldn't do like another season of it. But that's like how quickly it can shift from one season to the next. And it's just based on like maybe a couple words that you say or one interaction that you have that you're quickly the villain of this, you know, new season. It's crazy. hundred percent. I mean, I feel like I felt it a lot and it had to do with kind of the tension I had with producers. I felt like producers were out to get me, which one actually really was. And I'll talk about it in a later episode where I had a producer 
that I did not get along with. I called him out for emotionally manipulating me and he just had it out for me. And I really think he had an impact or I know he had an impact on my edit on After the Altar. Like he was really trying to give me the villain edit. But I see the change where I feel like I was pretty happy with my edit on Love's Blind season two, the the main season. And then After the Altar, it kind of came crashing down for me where I was involved in a lot of drama that... To be fair, I brought on screen, but I felt like there was a push for me to say things and a push for cast members to say things about me. Anyways, same thing. I don't think I could be on a reoccurring show and deal with the fact that there's so many factors in terms of how you're edited and how like one situation can change everything. Like you get a lot of love and all of a sudden you're getting so much backlash. Like that Mm -hmm. takes so much on your mental health. But speaking about Vanderpump Rules, I did hear that they're dumping their current cast, the cast that they've had for 11 seasons. And then for season 12, they're returning with an all new cast because I do follow some of the people on the current Vanderpump Rules cast, or now former, I should say. Mm -hmm. And they all like posted these goodbye and of an era type of Instagram posts where they're like, thank you so much. You know, this is kind of an end of a chapter type of thing. And as a Bravo girly who watched every single season of Vanderpump Rules, this was actually like such an end of an era. And it's very sad. But at the same time, I do feel like it is time to move on because so much has happened, right? It's been a decade of this cast going through ups and downs. We've seen marriages. We've seen divorce. We've seen breakups. We've seen scandal. And it gets to a point where you just can't salvage certain relationships and it no longer feels authentic to watch them because even in the just the last season it felt so like fake they were trying to like create scenes with like people that no longer have relationships and it just I think it's definitely time that it comes to an end but what is crazy is that they're not canceling the show but they're coming out with a brand new cast and I think about it I'm like how is this new cast gonna live up to the standards of what Stasi was or Jax or Tom Sandoval I don't know it's just like such big shoes to fill I don't know it's gonna be interesting I mean I'm not like that big of a fan of the show not that I don't like the show but you know I haven't watched every season but also it kind of was an example of how disposable like a cast can be, even though that they've been on a show for 11 years, like in reality TV, things can be taken away quick if you're no longer likable and people no longer really relate to you or take to your to your storylines. But on a positive note, what I took away from the show now that, you know, the um, cast is being replaced is so the now former cast started the show in their 20s and now they're in their 30s and 40s and just watching their progression in life from where they were before as these waiters and bartenders at this restaurant to now being influencers parents making millions of dollars it kind of shows that life always ends up working out somehow Like, you might be in your 20s and really worried, like, where am I going to be? But I look at the cast and how they progressed. I think some of them are still kind of going through some things. But for the most part, you know, they've become parents and they've kind of achieved their wildest dreams. And I was like, I don't know, for anyone in their 20s, like, it's kind of a real life example of like, things will work out. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't worry about how you're going to get there um, and what you have to do. Like things in life will ultimately work out. Yeah, it's really crazy that I feel like I've grown up with them. And it, like you said, like to see them as moms and parents and, you know, they're authors now. They have their own podcast and they're just doing big things in life and it's just like inevitable for things to come to an end so that new things can begin and Vanderpump Rules has just run its course but I feel like it's definitely time that they moved on from it yeah and it'll be interesting to see where they end up like are they going to do new shows or you know what's going to happen in their life but like you said I feel like it all ends up working out for the best, but I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what the new dynamics are (laughs) of, of everyone. You know, not saying that their lives are perfect. Like their lives do seem 
bumpy sometimes, especially with what is shared on social media. But I think for the most part, like, you know, one of the things that I always think about is like, well, I have kids one day, but why am I so worried about it? Like, I think ultimately with time, if I want it, like it will happen. And if it doesn't, like, that's okay, too. There's so many factors. But, like, at the end of the day, I truly do believe, like, life ends up working out. And, you know, life typically is always better than it mm -hmm. was, you know, last year or a few years ago. So I think as long as you're, like, working towards something. Um, and I think about, like, Ariana and Katie on the cast. I feel like they're the most sane people throughout <laughs> these seasons. And, like, I feel like they're the ones that are thriving more. And that just showed me, like, as long as you stay level-headed and are good to the people around you, like, life works out for you. So yeah. I don't know. I'm like... And that was just like a quick little lesson from that shit show of a show. <laughs> yeah. And also not to mention, I feel like the authenticity from people comes from showing those bumps in the road, you know, and it's like to prove that life is not perfect. It's a journey and like there's ups and downs. And I think people relate to that way more than showing up as like this perfect person. That's the best thing about being on television and showing your reality. It truly is reality. Like all of these people have shown up authentically and, you know, have had really amazing storylines. And that's why people are so hooked on the show. The whole concept of progression, though, makes me really excited for Out of the Pods because we started this podcast a year and a half ago in March 2023. And I know it hasn't really been that long, but it kind of has been long. It's like almost almost two years. Yeah. And like we are different than we were when we started the podcast. And a lot of our pod besties are growing up with us. And so I hope whether it's next year, a few years, maybe 10, 20 years from now, we still have this and like have this community of pod besties and like who knows how life is going to change. Like, I hope we look back on some of these episodes and listen and we're like, gosh, we knew nothing. Yeah, like, we was, knew nothing about this life. Yeah, I was just about to say that. It's going to be so interesting to watch some of our old clips and be like, who were those people? Yeah. <laughs> like, and just see the changes that we've been through. It's going to be, it's a beautiful journey. <laughs> and even like the comments we receive from our pod besties, whether it's like the emails, the comments on our YouTube videos, the DMs, even the comments on our Instagram and TikToks. I wonder if our pod besties will look back and be like, I think so differently now. I hope we feel that too. I hope we look at old clips of ourselves and we're like, wow, we are so different or like so much more mature or our mindset has changed because I love that sort of progression. So we'll just have to see. So keep DMing us, keep commenting on our stuff and make sure you leave a review and subscribe. See you next Monday. Bye. Bye.